It's a new financial year, a new racing season and a new look GRV preview for the first Country Cup of the financial year. It is the Bendigo Cup and I'm joined by my good friend George Ferrugia. And straight off the top, George, a scratching of Midnight Monarch. Yes, mate, you're on my right shoulder. Uh, huge news with the scratching of number eight. Yeah, we're getting used to this COVID thing, aren't we now, uh, Jim, Bob? But uh, yeah, um, obviously, unfortunately, Midnight Monarch won't take his place in the Bendigo Cup, which is really unfortunate because he, his run was absolutely outstanding. But um, now Flossing gets the run. She'll start from box eight, James, unless there's another scratching uh, in the race. And we're just seeing the odds now. What do you make of those odds? Obviously, we've got Shimmer Shine as the favourite. A uh, couple uh, certainly just right on his hammer. Yeah, look, I said about uh, probably two months ago that this may well be the best Bendigo Cup series of all time. It's just got so much early speed and I think the club would be tickled pink with the way the uh, the draws played out. Uh, box number one, speed star, $8.50. Hardstyle Rico, I mean, how much speed did he show last week was absolutely mm -hmm. sensational. You go down to Shimmer Shine, who I think despite drawing five, George, hasn't drawn too bad because Tigalong, uh, Tigalong Tonk, He'll get off the track just enough to give uh, Shimmer Shine the room to accelerate. So it is an intriguing Bendigo Cup field. Yeah, look, we'll have a look at the um, the speed map a little bit later, James. But I, I haven't seen a race for, for such a long time where obviously um, box manners are really important all the time. But there's probably hardly anything separating these greyhounds on speed maps. So you've just got to nail the start and all of a sudden you're in it up to your ears. Well, let's go through these runners now, heat by heat. I mean, it, you just got the feeling as the, the race meeting went on on Sunday, they were just getting better and better. First up, the first heat was won by Midnight Monarch. Obviously, now with him withdrawn, we, we won't take a look at the replay, but we'll go straight to uh, heat number two. And this was Yozo Bale bouncing from box number one. Again, he went good section, 6.48. Uh, 11.31 and he, he was just able to retain the rail, hold the pressure through the early part and that was the, the winning key. Yeah, this race uh, certainly didn't come as a surprise, James. Obviously, his sectionals in the Winter Cup at Cranbourne were outstanding. He had no luck in the final. We know he's capable of doing this, this Greyhound. He, he's just been building, hasn't, hasn't he? And um, he deserves to uh, make his way into the Bendigo Cup final. Not sure about the box draw here, though, because, oh, well, obviously, there's speed everywhere you draw, but... Um, Jeez, he's in against some real fast ones. Yeah, it's going to be tricky from box four. Heat number two was won by Speed Star, and uh, this boy just knows how to run along. He went 6.40 to the first mark, off the back in 11.14, and he just does it with that that burning early pace, George, sets it up from the front, and, look, he found the line fairly well. He won it by a length, and, and realistically, they were never going to catch him. Yeah, look, I'm happy for Team Daly uh, with, the, with with what they've done with this Greyhound, but also for Sonia and Craig Davis, the owners, this, this Greyhound has been a model of consistency on provincial circuits for such a long time, hasn't he? And uh, look, he was up against some good ones, but uh, he's just got the right habits, doesn't he? And we've seen him uh, about a month or so ago against Hooked on Scotch, mm -hmm. giving Hooked on Scotch some real curry in that uh, Warnable race. And I'll tell you what, he's been absolutely fantastic. Good luck to them for making that final. We may be apart, George, but we're thinking the same, mate. You took the words out of my mouth about that hooked on Scotch uh, clash. And of course, he's gone on to make the Brisbane Cup this week. So the form line, very, very strong. Heat number four of the Bendigo Cup. And it was just pace again, the key. Slingshot Titan bounced out of box number two. Uh, look at him go early, 6.41. What I'm loving is the mid-race pace as well. 11.13's absolutely humming along. And, and he was able to stave off Mozza, who's gone in as the second reserve for the final. But they they just space the rest with sheer speed. Yeah, look, when you think of it, he's probably only a length and a half, two lengths behind uh, Hardstyle Rico and Shimmer Shine to that back marker, as you mentioned. And again, this doesn't come as a surprise that Slingshot Titan has made a Bendigo Cup final. His provincial form is outstanding. He's got such a great winning record. Um, again, box three, probably not drawn that badly um, if he can begin as well as he did uh, on Sunday. Yeah, it's going to be tricky, though, just getting across even speed star. that They're going to have to be on their game, no doubt about that. Heat number yeah. five was probably one of the upsets. Aston Peroni getting home to score. Jumped from box number one, used the draw. Uh, was outpaced initially by Leon Vale, who then found trouble. But as he stayed up the track from box number two, it just created that space for Aston Peroni. And he might have got lucky, but at the end of the day, he was able to cling on and advance to the Bendigo Cup. But clearly, George, it's going to be tougher next week. Yeah, it is going to be tougher, but you still got to drive through on that fence. And you're right, Leon Bale did give him a little bit of room, but I, I like the way he pushed through and then held on at the end. Um, look, 
his chances probably with the box draw have become made even harder because he's going to have to try to get around so much speed in this race. But um, he deserves his spot, but I, I think he'll be long odds. Heat number six, and this was probably when the racing really started to warm up, I think we could say. Tigger Long Tonk was absolutely outstanding, and we all know over 500 metres just how good he is, but when he jumps like this, he gets clear air for the first 30 or 40. There's barely a greyhound around that can go with him. He burnt off Bring Your Banjo, who I've got a lot of time for as a, as a real fast sprinter, George, but 646, 1114, and just charged up the home straight, 1132 there about the run home. This was scintillating. It was, and I reckon the first thing Tigalong Tonk would have done is looked around uh, when they were milling behind the boxes to see if Simon Told Allen was uh, uh, in the area because he's just been beaten by an absolute champion in his last couple of starts. He certainly hasn't been racing bad, Tigalong Tonk. Uh, he got the opportunity where Simon Told Allen wasn't around and uh, he just put paid to them. Mm. I love this greyhound. He's been up for such a long time and uh, he gets his opportunity here. Again, probably the box draw isn't too bad um, if he can begin as, as cleanly as he did. Yeah, I think he had to draw on the, the outside four if he was going to win the, the Bendigo Cup, and he's been able to do that with box six. But uh, whether or not he can he can get past Shimashan and that on his inside, that is the, the real question. Heat number seven, and how about this hardstyle Rico, George? I, I must say, I, I didn't think this Greyhound was capable of going 6.36 to the first peg, but he did off the back in 11.02, which is, is out of this world. It was just so impressive, and he was never going to lose running sections like that. Absolutely. Uh, geez, if he can get out like that again uh, um, come uh, Friday, I'll tell you what, he, he'll be in this up to his ears. He was, look, we all know his ability, right? He's broken the Shepherd and track record. He won the Shepherd and Cup off a wide draw, but he's proved it off an inside draw. There was a little bit of speed in that heat, but he just put paid to them really, really quickly. And as you mentioned, to go the fastest of the uh, the back section uh, is a feather in his cap. Um, I don't really mind his draw either. Um, if he can begin as cleanly as he did, uh, watch out. He's... Uh, He's an extremely fast greyhound. This is probably, uh, the Shepherd and Cup was a great field, don't get me wrong, but geez, he's got an extra challenge, I think, uh, come Friday night. Yeah, well, he just bounced back to form in his heat. No two ways about that. And if he reproduces that speed and that becomes more of a regular occurrence, this could be a genuine, genuine Group 1 superstar moving forward over the next 12 months. But uh, just when we thought we had it all, George, Shimmer Shine bounced out of box number eight, set a new track record in winning the final heat. I mean, how impressive was this to round out a wonderful day? It was. And again, I'm happy for connections because um, if you rewind to probably the start of the year, James, and you put a pause on it, he's probably in the top two greyhounds in the country. Injuries have absolutely crueled him in the, in the past, well, the start of 2020, but it looks like they've got him right now. He's um, He put the writing on the wall against Zambora Smokey when he did heat it at Shepherd and nearly broke the track record at Bendigo before that. And um, look, we all know it. He's devastating best. He's clearly one of the best greyhounds going around. And um, I just love the dog. I'm a, I'm a huge fan and it'll be uh, unbelievable to see him win. Uh, a big what, I, cup. what I loved about him, though, was he, he probably didn't even ping the leads. He was about third yeah. away and he just exploded around the outside. And, and what I really like about the draw, George, is he's got Tigalong Tonk on his outside who shouldn't impact him in the first 25, 30 metres. That'll just give him that room to move. But the speed map couldn't be more important than it is in this Bendigo Cup. They're going to be right at the, at the top end of a speed map here, George. And here it is. Speed star, GRV forecasting to lead. Of course, this is all data based. Is that is that how you see the race playing out? Shimmer shine, tig along, tonk speed star. There's there's a lot of early pace. Well, I think it comes down to the fact that speed star is a very very safe beginner. And you you mentioned about shimmer shine, who can be a little bit hit or miss. Tig along, tonk the same. Probably hard style, Rico the same. In in regards to their early speed, they've certainly got it. So this is why I think their box manners just comes into play. And with COVID, obviously, um, James, these dogs have been put in two by two instead of four by four. So Shimmer Shine is going to be in the box for a long time. Will that be of an advantage? Um, connections think it will. Um, because if he just nails the start, we've seen what he did at Sandown, again, on debut at Sandown, running 496. They're the type of splits you probably need to lead a race like the Bendigo Cup. So... Yeah, I just think box manners yeah. is going to be huge because they, they're all very, very similar to that first mark.
Well, hardstyle Rico might be the advantage of the, the COVID-19 restrictions, really, because he went into box number one, was loaded for about 60 seconds and, and then yeah. clearly began the best he ever has in his career. So it can be intriguing how sometimes if they're loaded for longer, they can begin better. And, and some who are loaded for shorter times may, may miss the start. So we'll have to wait and see. But we continue on now to the all-important selections now for the Bendigo Cup, the Triple M 2020 Bendigo Cup. Who's going to win it, mate? Uh, my numbers are five, six, two, and three. I, I've gone shimmer shine, uh, Jim Bob. Look, um, as you said, if you can just get that room to move, I, I haven't seen too many dogs with his explosive speed. He and Simon Tolls Helen uh, are, are probably on par in that regard, and that's uh, probably a big call because of what we've seen Simon Tolls Helen do in the last three or four months. But I don't think there's much between them, and for that fact, I think when the whips are cracking, shimmer shine will be the one to beat. Tig along Tonk, what a terrific, terrific greyhound he's been for a long time. Really hard to go past him, especially if he gets left alone in that first 50 metres. Hardstyle Rico drawn very, very well. Um, I think if he can just sit into a nice position, we all know what he can do over 500 metres. Speedstar isn't the strongest of greyhounds, even though he probably doesn't have to be over the Bendigo 430, but they'll be running all over the top in the last 50 metres. And I really like sl Slingshot Titan's effort, uh, James, on, on Sunday. I, I think he's... Uh, he can be a very safe beginner. Um, he's got the, the speed to, to record some very fast splits. So five, six, two, and three for me, mate. How are you going? Almost identical, mate. I'm going five, six, two, and one. I agree with Shimmer Shine. I, I think despite drawing box number five, I think Connections would be quietly happy with the draw with Tigalong Tonk the outside. He's going to create the space for the five to burst through the gap. And if he can lead Shimmer Shine, I, I think with that run home of 12.30, which I believe was the strongest of all of the heats, I, I don't see them running him down. Second, I've gone six tick along Tonk. If he follows the move of Shimmer Shine, he's going to be right there at the business end. For third, I've gone with number two, and then the red to round out my top four. Just draw nicely along the inside. But I thought Hardstyle Rico was the, the real X Factor runner because on that data-based uh, speed map, George, he was the slowest away, and yet in his heat, he just he just proved it was a rare occurrence, just how much speed he showed. So if he can begin like that, he's going to be a massive contender as well. But $20 spend, I'm going to go just uh, very, very simple, $10 each way, Shimmer Shine number five. And let's hope the uh, the COVID-19 restrictions with the long loading process can seem begin quickly straight to the front. It could be game, set, match. Yeah, similar for me, mate. I'm putting $20 a win, though, uh, on the nose, Shimmer Shine. Uh, I'll be uh, cheering him home, but... Look, it's, it's such a terrific field and $50,000 mm. to the winner, James. In this day and age and all the um, kerfuffle we're going through with COVID at the moment, it's, it's great to see Bendigo still put on this unbelievable prize money. Yeah, mate, it's great to see. And great to see starting the new financial year uh, with a race worth $50,000 in the country. It's just extraordinary. Huge, huge support program as well, mate. We've got the Winter Cup for the Stayers. Uh, the Vic Bread Series, the Ready to Race Mid-Year Bonus Race, and then the Battlers Cup. I think a lot of people are going to love the Battlers Cup. Uh, that's worth $5,000 for Tier 3 Greyhounds and a nice new initiative for GRV for the slower Greyhounds to get their time to shine. I don't think it'll be the last time we see the Battlers Cup, that's for sure, James. The uh, nominations were through the roof, weren't they, uh, mm. from uh, some of the Tier 3 Greyhounds that competed. So, again, a big round of applause for Bendigo, for putting on a race like that. And as you said, that Winter Cup final over the 600s uh, is absolutely fantastic. It's drawn together a very, very good field. And just quickly, before we wrap up, George, I've been saying for months this could be one of the best country cups we've ever seen. I, I know I sometimes maybe use it a bit too easily, saying this is one of the strongest country cups we've seen. But honestly, in this case, we've got three greyhounds, I think, that were within half a length of the track record, which was set by Shimmer Shine in the heats. I mean... I don't recall a faster, rounded-out country cup field in comparison to this one at Bendigo. It's just going to be huge. Oh, yeah. Look, there's track records everywhere you look um, between these greyhounds and so much early speed, as you said. And it's such a speed track, uh, Bendigo. You just want to get out and go, as we said. Um, whoever uh, can just find the top early is going to be incredibly hard to run down. Cannot wait. It is a huge, huge week of grand racing. And the Bendigo Cup is smack bang right in the middle of it. Correct, mate. Well, they're fast. They'll be flying. Get to Bendigo Friday for the running of the 2020 Triple M Bendigo Cup.